Shalom. Today we're going to cover another pair of letters in the Aleph Bet with all their cognates, the words that go with them. Today we're doing Pe and Nun, and you should remember that the final Nun has a different form than the Nun at the beginning or the middle of a word. These two letters do have a meaning by themselves. The word Pen, which means lest, it's similar to unless in English. It comes from the idea of a lesser thing can happen. It usually has a negative connotation, but not always. Genesis 3.3 3. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. The lesser thing would be that you die. Genesis 11 And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Well, that didn't work out well. Sometimes we just see the translation not. Genesis 24, 6. And Abraham said unto him, Beware that you bring not my son thither again. We could translate it, lest you bring him there. Genesis 31, 24. And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night and said unto him, Take heed that you speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. Some other translations, Genesis 31, 31. And Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said, Per adventure, lest you would take by force your daughters from me. And here is one with maybe not, not so much of a lesser outcome. Isaiah six ten, Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. This word comes from a verb form, pana, which means to turn. Genesis 24, 49. And now, if you will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me. And if not, tell me that I may turn, literally turn to the right hand or to the left. Exodus 7, 23. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house. Neither did he set his heart to do this also. Sometimes it has a meaning of throwing everything away to, to turn the place around to be empty. Leviticus 14.3 Then the priest shall command that they empty the house before the priest go into it to see the plague, that all that is in the house be not made unclean, and afterwards the priest shall go in to see the house. Zephaniah 3.15 Jehovah has taken away your judgments. He has cast out your enemy. He turned things around. The king of Israel, even Jehovah, is in the midst of you. You shall not see evil any more. In an idiomatic sense, to turn your face to somebody, to give them favor. Numbers 16, 15. And Moses was very wroth and said unto Jehovah, Respect not their offering. Don't turn your face and look at it. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. Again, with the idea of turning the condition of something. Isaiah 40, verse 3. The voice of him that cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of Jehovah, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. It's used with respect to time when the time of day is changing. Genesis twenty four sixty three. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at eventide, in other words, at the turning of the evening. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. Exodus fourteen twenty seven. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its strength. When the morning appeared, in the turning time of the morning, and the Egyptians fled against it, and Jehovah overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. From the idea of turning, we get the word pina, which means corner. The corner is the place where the wall turns. Exodus 27, 2. And you shall make the horns of it upon the four corners thereof. His horns shall be of the same, and you shall overlay it with brass. Second Chronicles 26, 9. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, and at the valley gate, and at the turning of the wall, and fortified them. This is a different word for turning, and actually there are quite a few different words for turning. The phrase you probably know best concerning this word pina is rosh pina, the head of the corner, from Psalm one eighteen twenty two. The stone which the builders refused is become the head of the corner. There is no word for stone, actually, in the Hebrew. So it is discussed whether this Rosh Pina, the head of the corner, is a cornerstone or a foundation stone or a steading stone 
as we see in the picture. It is the first stone set in the construction of a masonry foundation. All other stones will be set in reference to this stone, thus determining the position of the entire structure. A good definition for Messiah. Possibly it might be the keystone or the capstone, which is the wedge-shaped stone at the apex of a masonry arch, or typically round-shaped one at the apex of a vault. In both cases, it is the final piece placed during construction and locks all the stones into position, allowing the arch or vault to bear weight. So again, we have the stone which sets the shape for the rest of the building, and either it's the first stone, the aleph, or it's the last stone, the tav. Yeshua reconciles this in Luke 20, verse 17 and 18. And he beheld them and said, what is this, then, that is written, the stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner? Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. That's a stone on the bottom. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. That's a stone on the top. So it can be either one. This root, pana, is also related to the word for face. And so we see an interesting thing in the King James in Genesis 18.22. It is translated, the men turned their faces from thence. But in the New King James, it just said they turned away. So the King James relates to the idea of the word for face, which in Hebrew is panim. It looks plural. It is plural. It is both singular and plural. It has no singular form. It is always in a plural form. Genesis 32.30. And Jacob called the name of the place Pnei El, which means the face of God. For I have seen God face to face, Panim El Panim, and my life is preserved. Literally, there's one face of him and one face of God, but the word is still plural. In Ezekiel, here's a plural form, but it's still going to be the same word, Panim. Ezekiel 10.21, everyone had four faces apiece, and everyone had four wings, and the likeness of the hands of a man was under their wings. So from this concept of panim face, we have a preposition, lifne, which gives us the idea of in the face of. It can be before in time or before in space. Genesis 6.11, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. In God's face, for him, in front of him. Genesis 13, 10. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of the Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before Jehovah destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of Jehovah, like the land of Egypt, when you come to Zoar. This is before he did something in time. The Pene can also be attached to the preposition Mem, which means from. Mipne, from before the face of. Genesis 3, 8. And they heard the voice of Jehovah God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Jehovah God amongst the trees of the garden from before his face. They were caught red-handed and they were embarrassed. Genesis 24, 46. And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Chet. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Chet, such as these are of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do me? Here it is translated as because of, because they're in my face. And sometimes both prepositions are attached, milifne, and I don't know why. Genesis 4.16 And Cain went out from the presence of Jehovah to dwell in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Genesis 41.46 and Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the land of Egypt. So the problem with all of these is that you can't look up Lifne in your Strongs and you can't look up Mipne and you can't look up Milifne because they're all, every instance of those words will be categorized under the Panim, under the word for Panim. These preposition attached words also carry the suffixes for the person, for the object of the preposition. So in, in Genesis 6.13, God said to Noah, the end of all flesh is, is come before me. It's not written there lifne, it's written there lifanai. The ending indicates before me. 
for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Again, Genesis 32, 3, and Jacob sent messengers before him, Lephanav, with the ending for the personal pronoun, him, to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And actually, most of the cases will have a personal pronoun attached. It's a little difficult to find just Lephne sitting by itself. It will have a personal pronoun. In an idiomatic expression, the bread which is in the tabernacle and is called the showbread, is called lechem panim, and it's translated as the bread of the presence. In many places, Exodus 25.30, for example, and you shall set upon the table showbread before me always, lechem panim, the bread of the face. In the Greek, it is translated e arti tis Prothesios, which translated mean the bread which is purposely set forth. So there's no concept of face in that Greek translation. Another word which comes from this root is pnima, which means inside. 1 Kings 6.18 And the cedar of the house within was carved with knops and open flowers. All was cedar, there was no stone seen. 2 Chronicles 29.18 then they went in to Hezekiah the king and said, We have cleansed all the house of Jehovah and the altar of burnt offering with all the vessels thereof and the showbread table and all the vessels thereof. The idea of being inside means that your attention is drawn to something different. Your head is going to turn because you're going to look at something different because you're in a different location. The word that is related to this is pininim from Proverbs 31.10, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. We also see the name of one of the wives of Elkanah, the father of Samuel, from 1 Samuel 1.2. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah. The name of the other was Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Penina is translated in various ways to mean a gem, like ruby, or a pearl. And what you see here is, in gem, you're going to see the different facets and the different faces of the surface of the gem and the different angles that the light hits and reflects back. A pearl is actually somewhat translucent and is built by layers and layers and layers and layers. So again, it has this reflective quality and also it has a special inside. One more word we will look at is often, which means wheel, which is something which definitely turns. Exodus 14, 25. And he took off their chariot wheels so that they drove them with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for Jehovah fights for them against the Egyptians. And the many wheels of Ezekiel's chariot, the appearance of the wheels, and their work was like unto the color of beryl. And the four had one likeness, and their appearance of their work was, as it were, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. And I leave you with a modern Hebrew word, ofanayim, is often wheel with the dual ending. That means there are two wheels, and this is the word for bicycle. Until next time, to simitainayim al-hashamayim, keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.